Hello and welcome to another MacGuffin Top 5 podcast. I'm Ed. And I'm Alan. And today we're going to do a Top 5 movie speeches. Yes. Great dialogue sometimes makes great movies. These characters have something to say and they say it well. Absolutely. <laughs> My number 5, we're going to go straight to a comedy. I'm going to choose Animal House. Oh, and I'm yes. going to choose the triumphant... John Belushi beginning speech that Tim Matheson kind of takes over. Yeah. But, you know, was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Germans, what? He's, let, let him go. He's on yeah, a roll. Let him go. <laughs> At, fantastic. That, and, so, and, yeah. and what I love about that speech, I mean, aside from, the, I, I love that movie, that's one of the reasons that that movie is actually so good is that stuff like that is smart. Mm -hmm. Despite being a, a dumb, you know, naked booby comedy. You know, with, mm. with countless college campus movies have copied it over time, but the, a lot of the characters in it, in it are really smart, and even even Bluto, who's a big dumb, you know, mm -hmm. loudmouth or you know, crude, rude guy, sure, still can you know, be be the be the guy in the room that inspires everybody. It's a, it's a hilarious moment. It's a hilarious moment. It's probably the best moment of, of that film. You see this guy who, you know, he's kind of a... Well, he is a slub, and he's just trying to, like, yep. root these people on, and it's all just to have a party, you know? It's, Let's go! It's, no, no, no! Yeah, it's great. Great, great pick. <laughs> um, moving on to my number five. Uh, my number five speech is from a film that... Um, well, I'm just going to say it. It's the speech in Scent of a Woman. Uh, hoo -ah! Al Pacino going over Can't the stop top. Saying, hoo -ah! Yes, this is definitely the point where Al Pacino goes from you know the Al Pacino of Godfather to the Al Pacino the hoo -ah kind yeah. of a guy. Um, but in this movie, he goes over the top and goes over the top really, really well. Um, he plays this blind military man who is helping out uh, this kid played by chris o'donnell try to prove his innocence and it's it's so funny because he's in this school and he just starts talking and then the more he gets into it the louder and louder he gets and <laughs> as the uh the, the dean of the school is like okay um you're you're done you know that's enough and he is like oh i'm just getting warmed up <laughs> and then he just stands up and just keeps on going and it's just Everything that that character has felt and been through, just all being brought out and just laying it all out. It's a fantastic speech and fantastic acting from Al Pacino. I mean, you can make fun of him for how he acted, you know, in later films after, but in that film, he deserved his Oscar. I, I, I like that movie a lot. I will say, I think that's the acting style that kind of starts to ruin Pacino. Mm -hmm. But... I, regardless, just take the movie on its own. I do like that movie a lot. When it comes to over-the-top acting, no other actor can go over-the-top quite like Pacino. I think he's on that. So. Awesome. Well, on to, if you want to go over-the-top, my number four from the 70s, Apocalypse Now. Ah. And it is the classic speech given by Robert Duvall about... You smell that? <laughs> Love the smell of napalm in the morning. It smells like victory. Yes. We're going to win this war someday. Or we're, this war is going to end someday. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, there are many moments of madness in that film. You know, everything with yeah, Colonel the Kurtz. is all about madness. Right. But yeah. that, that moment is when everybody in his presence is, he's magnetic mm -hmm. and yet scary all at the same time. It's he portrays a guy that will just do anything. Like he he doesn't understand. Charlie like, don't surf. How how incredible or how crazy the situation he is. Yes. It's just like we're just gonna go in there and win, and I'm gonna go surfing, you know. Right, and he he's you know he's standing there. I I don't know how he was able to not blink when bombs are going off around him. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, he's he's standing straight and tall with his shirt off and his cowboy hat on. Yeah, his shirt off. Like he can get shot at any moment. Yeah, doesn't care. Yeah, and and yeah, that speech is. Truly, uh, one of the top moments of madness in that film. It is great. It's a great speech, a great moment, great performance by Robert Duvall. Yes. I love the scene when he's in the helicopter and he's telling the gunman, You see the waves? You see how it breaks? Look how it breaks. <laughs> it's great. Okay, let's move on to my number four. Uh, my number four speech is from a film uh, that was released in 1940, and it is the final speech that Charlie Chaplin gives in The Great Dictator. You've mentioned this before. I have. Um, in my mind, it's now, a good movie. I have to say that this speech 
doesn't really fit overall with the tone of the film it, that in my opinion uh, the the entire beginning all the way through the movie the comedy is very satirical and wacky and kind of over the top and Charlie Chaplin decided to end the film on a very serious note uh, pretty much not portraying a character he's pretty much just talking out of his heart you know we have to take down evil men and prosperity and goodwill and we have to make peace and everything like that and while I don't know if the movie or that moment really melds with everything else that happens in the film I put it in here because it's something that Charlie Chaplin was very passionate about and something that he felt he had to put in there and I am a hundred percent behind well it was like a that. call to arms he was I mean at, at the time the war, you know, the war wouldn't be over for another five years. Mm -hmm. He was trying to help get America off its butt sure. to, to help the war effort. And it, it is very much a propaganda moment mm -hmm. of, of come to action, we need help. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, good, a powerful moment, a good movie. It is. Yeah. Really good movie. My number three is a much quieter speech, but still one of the most amazing. And in Jaws... When Captain Quint gives the famous uh, Minneapolis speech, mm. when he's t talking about um, uh, uh, delivering the uh, atomic bomb, and then their their ship gets sunk and his men get picked off one by one um, by a, you know by sharks, and that 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 moment about speaking about you ever seen a shark's cold dead eyes. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's great about that is you've got a movie that is all thriller and all action. And then they slow it down to a, just a snail's pace to give you this quiet, powerful character moment mm -hmm. that is probably scarier than almost anything in the movie. Well, that's what that's what makes that film so great is that not only is the action and the horror and the surprises really, really well done, so are the character moments and the quiet moments and the scenes of dialogue. Spielberg puts just as much effectiveness in those scenes as everything else, and that's what makes that movie so great. And I, I honestly, I, I, when I think back on great actors, I often forget Robert Shaw myself. But he he had many great, great roles, and this yeah. was one of his best. Once again, Jaws, the cinematic answer to <laughs> any question. So, all right. Uh, let's move on to my number three. Um, my number three speech is from one of my all-time favorite films. It's from uh, 1994, and it is the speech that Samuel L. Jackson gives as Jules the Hitman in the end of Pulp Fiction. I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying, trying real, real hard. hard to be the shepherd it's such a great great moment great speech um amazing that quentin tarantino was able to write a scene where a character repeats a speech and does it differently and does it even more effective and he, it's a reflection of the character and how he's changed from the beginning of that film to the end Jules is one of the great characters that Quentin Tarantino has ever ever made and that whole transformation that he goes through uh, of this guy who's this badass killer um, saying a speech that he really has no idea what he's talking Please. about and then at the end he realizes that you know things aren't things there are more to life than just what I'm doing you know I have to be I have to make a change in my life to better my life and please correct, correct me if I'm wrong but that's not actually a passage from the Bible is it I it's think it was made kind of, up it's a very like inaccurate yeah. right uh, and, and, and which is which is hilarious at how much it I, I, I actually Tarantino didn't make my list simply because I had too much trouble picking out one speech uh, you probably exactly picked the it. great but I mean Tarantino's dialogue is across the board fantastic. Yeah, so. I mean, there's fantastic pieces of dialogue all throughout that film, and yeah. that right there, I think, pretty much sums up that in, that entire movie. You yes. know, it's all that movie is all about redemption, and Samuel L. Jackson, he is, he was so great in that moment. Ed's dead, baby. Ed's dead. <laughs> anyway, on to my number two, is um, my one of my many favorite moments from Doctor Strangelove, mm. and it is when Sterling Hayden's character gives that amazing speech to Colonel Mandrake about precious bodily precious, losing his precious bodily fluids. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I, I, back in the days, a little, little personal note, back in the days when you actually had a, uh, an answering machine, I sat there with a microphone and taped that entire like minute and a half speech. Uh -huh. It was my answering machine message, and everybody <laughs> had to sit through it, because damn it, they were going to hear that. Oh, man, but, uh, that's so good. <laughs> it is, you know, that whole bit about... I felt a sense of fatigue afterwards, <laughs> and and then uh, and then a, uh, and I've deprived women of my bodily flu essence since then. Exactly. Wow. It, I mean, that movie's great dialogue through and through, but that 
Oh man, Sterling Hayden's good in that movie. Oh, it's it's so good. And then uh, combine it with the phallic imagery of Sterling Hayden with a big ass yes, gun the big and gun. the cigar sticking out of his mouth. And you also have um, oh god, I'm forgetting the actor. Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers. Yeah. The speech is so great because Peter Sellers' reactions to the speech yes. make it even better. My gummy leg, the strings gone up my leg. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, anyway, yeah, I can't say enough about Doctor Strange Love. Doctor Strange Love is a great film. Great film. Great, great pick. <laughs> Uh, okay, moving on to my number two speech. Um, my number two speech is from a film uh, that I would argue as one of the top five greatest written films ever. Uh, it's from 1976. It was written by Patty Chayefsky, and it is Cine Lumet's Network. And this film is made up of nothing but fantastic speeches. Yes, every, it is. Literally every scene has a great speech that talks about, you know, how, you know, sensationalism and and how news has lost its integrity. And how everything in that movie has become reality. And, and how everything has then. become reality, exactly. But the speech I uh, chose was the one that Mr. Arthur Jensen gives uh, to Peter Finch in that darkened room oh after Peter God, Finch so scary. stops the uh, business transaction from going on. It's so amazing what Ned, Ned Beatty does in that moment. First off, he's grand, grandiose and over the top, you know, trying to get Howard Beale, you know, trying to get his attention and then all of a sudden he's like am I getting through to you Mr. Beale and then now he's very subtle and he's just talking with like a straight normal voice and everything he says about how the world is run by money and essentially and, refers to himself as God and essentially refers to himself as God it's so so incredible so powerful and dramatic and so well done it's one of those moments where the writing the acting and direction is in perfect sync and it's Oh man, it's so that amazing. I want to see it right I'm now. I'm mad as hell. Anyway. And what's so incredible about it is that Ned Beatty wasn't originally going to be that actor. He he was brought on at the last minute and gave such one of the most memorable performances in that film. So all time great one of the all time great scripts. Anyway, yep. my number one, you want to talk about another one of the all time great scripts. I'm just gonna. It's probably the most obvious thing ever, but Casablanca. Casablanca. Yep. That was and, that was it. Yeah. Was that your number one too? No. No, it's oh, it's okay. not. But it was in my top. Yeah. Five. I mean, it, yeah. just because it yeah. it I, I'm putting this list together, it has to be there. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, maybe not today, maybe not to tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of our lives. It's one of the most oft quoted speeches of all time. It's one of the most off shown clips of all time. It is. Uh, Casablanca through and through is one of the great scripts. The dialogue snaps, sparkles, and there's a reason why it's listed number yeah. one in many lists of the greatest written films of all time. I mean, that movie is so freaking quotable, you know. Yes, and of all the gin joints in right. all the places in all the world. But the but you know, doing the noble thing and let letting Ilsa go off with uh, Victor Laszlo, and uh, and and doing it with such panache. I, I, I mean, I yeah. Can't can't say enough about that moment in that film, Casablanca. It's it's a great film. I mean, there really isn't much more you can say about it that hasn't <laughs> already been said. So, um, okay. So my number one speech um, comes from a great film as well. Uh, it's from 1954, and it is the classic speech that Marlon Brando gives in On the Waterfront. Mm -hmm. I could have been a contender. And this was I uh, thought about this one as well. It's mm -hmm. So, so moving. One of the gr greatest acting performances ever. Marlon Brando is, he is so incredible, so influential. And the performance he gives as this boxer who, throughout his entire life, he knew that he was a bum. He could have been somebody, but he chose to go, you know, in another direction. Could have been a no And the fact that... The fact that that speech is hinged on the relationship between Terry Malloy and his brother Charlie, another great performance by Rod, Rod Steiger. Who is we, another one of those guys we often forget nowadays, but mm -hmm. was at the time especially... A, a terrific actor yeah. in his own right. There's so there's so much heartbreak in, in in that moment. I mean, it was like you remember that night in the garden. I could have had him. I could have had him. But no, it, yeah. you said it wasn't my night. It wasn't my night. It's like, oh man, just thinking about it right now is getting me like emotional. You know, it's such a great speech, such an emotional movie, and uh, and so one good. of the most important movies for actors. Of it all is. Time. It yeah. is. Yep. So anyway, there are. This was a hard category. There are we could probably do a top fifty list of great speeches. Exactly. So anyway, why don't you tell us yours? And you can find us at mcguffinpodcast.com. Uh, and we'll see you next time.